One of the things that I love most about fly fishing is that each river or fishery seems to have its own distinct character. And there's a tremendous satisfaction in figuring out just a small part of their secrets. I was down in the snowy mountains with some good mates. Jared and I had just finished competing in the National Fly Fishing Championships and Al and Doug had generously donated their time to act as controllers for the competition. It was a fantastic experience for all of us, but it was quite demanding, both physically and mentally. So the day after the comp, we were all looking for a nice, easy, relaxing day's fishing on a smaller, gently flowing river with easy wading and access. I had a particular river in mind that I hadn't fished for almost 20 years. I was hoping that it was gonna be just as I remembered it. And as we walked down to the banks, it looked just as it had when I last visited in the early 2000s. After three wet seasons, and with plenty of water around everywhere, I was itching to see if the fishing here had returned to its former glory, or maybe even surpassed it. So I'm down on uh, one of the small snowy mountains streams today. Um, it's blowing pretty well. I'm just going to fish a single nymph around because it's fairly small water. It's pretty pockety, it's not too deep. Anyway, I'm going to see how I go. The wind is going to make things a little bit difficult today, but I'll do my best. I'm just fishing a little pocket here. It's just a couple of little pockets around this place that I'll try and pick out. It's not exactly a prime spot to start, but I haven't seen a lot of depth so far on this river. There's caddis um, getting around at the moment. We saw a little brown caddis back at the car and I've seen a few flying around here so far. So nymphing can be really difficult when it's windy. Your um, sighter and everything gets blown around a lot. It can make casting accuracy difficult. Um, and it also affects your drift because the wind blowing on the line is going to drag your flies around. So there's a few little things you can do to try to compensate. Um, the first one of those is just to fish short. The more, when you think about it, the more line you've got out the rod tip, um, the more line, the more sail area there is for the wind to catch and to create drag and blow your flies around. So. Um, fortunately this river's got a bit of tannin in it, it's got a bit of colour, so that's probably going to allow me to get a little bit closer to the fish than if it was super clear. It also allows me to fish a slightly heavier nymph and do shorter drifts, and that heavier nymph also helps with being able to cast and creating a bit more of an anchor in the water against the wind. So you'll notice I've probably only got about a rod length of line out at the moment. I'm just keeping it really short and in close and doing short, quick drifts. Probably a good idea for me to swing a few flies today as well, particularly if there's a caddis hatch. Sometimes um, when there's a hatch going on, the fish can respond really well to, uh, to a fly that's swinging up in the water column because it's imitating what the, uh, what the nymphs are doing when they're emerging. Hey, Dougie's onto a fish. Nice one, mate. Got him? Was it a brown or a rainbow? <laughs> Good stuff, mate. Well done. A little bit of a seam out there in the run, but I can try and a little bit of deep water back there, too. Swing one across. There's a big caddis. Let's see if there's anything down that far bank there. I think I'm too heavy at the moment. I probably need to go down a bead size. I've got a 3.3 millimeter bead on them at the moment. I'll go down to a three mil.
There's one. He was just sitting on that far side water there. Nice. Ooh. He's going down. Dude, I'm back. Beautiful. Lovely little brownie. Anyway, there he is. Lovely little brown. There he goes. So he took the uh, caddisy looking sort of nymph. He was sitting just over the far side in there, in that slot, right against the far bank. There's only a tiny little slot there that's sort of a good spot. And sure enough, it held a fish. So there's just a tiny little pocket here. I don't know if it's going to be enough to hold a fish. Possibly not, but I'll just give it a couple of quick drifts. It's not very... There's not a lot of holding water in this stretch of river, to be honest. It's a tiny little bit of a slot here. I don't know if it's deep enough, really. I don't know if it's good enough water to hold a fish, but again, we'll give it a few quick ones. There's one. It's in that slot. Oh, I dropped him. <laughs> oh well. There's a bit of a deeper slot through there. And coming down the other side there. Give this a bit of a fish. Um, I'm walking up behind my friends, Doug and Al. So a lot of this water's probably already been fished. If I was first through it, it might be a little bit more productive, but we'll see if we can pull something out. There's a nice fish. Ooh. There's a nice brownie. Ooh, he's sort of trying to go under some rocks there. We'll try and keep him out. He's a lovely fish. Ooh. He's trying to go for colour too. Oh. There we are. That's a lovely brown for a small river. He's a beautiful fish. Guys, look at that. What a stunning brown. Beautiful fish. Absolutely lovely. Oh, there he goes. So, he came out of that slightly deeper slot just there. There's not a lot so far of uh, the water that I've covered that's really prime holding water. So it seems like the minute you hit a really good looking piece of water. There's a fish there. Got an upstream wind now that's playing havoc a bit with my drift. I'm just trying to get across into that far side bank. Looks like there's a little bit of an undercut over there under those, um, under that tuft. to jiggle that out of that bush just then. Short beats re-rigging. Alright. Looks like there's another little slot up here. I'm going to try and hit.
I really would have thought there'd be a fish in that. So the other thing with um, keeping your cider off the water mm -hmm. is that it helps with being in contact straight away with the yep. flies. Yep. Because sometimes what can happen is a fish can smash the fly as soon as it hits the water. Yeah, well, I, I think when I, up there when I landed, didn't land, I saw this big flash come after it. Yeah, so you want to be in contact straight away as soon yeah. as that flies in. And if you're throwing slack yeah. and then picking it up, then you're missing that contact of the first part of the drift. Caddis everywhere. Mm. Will you start dry flying later on? Yeah, I might. Although I haven't seen anything rise yet. No. So they're probably just eating the nymphs. Yeah. That's a nice picture here. Beautiful spot. It is lovely, isn't it? Beautiful river. There's a little flop on that rock up there. Yep. Yeah, it's a big fish in a, such a small, shallow... There he is, he's in that spot. Oh, wow. Got it. It's all on film. I heard you saying it's in a the slot, then you hooked it. So that's good for you. Yeah. I walked straight past it. <laughs> there he is. A little, yep, another brownie. Beautiful. There he is. Lovely fish. Get him straight back in the water. A nice sort of deeper run here off the back of this. That looks lovely. So let's just have a bit of a fish through here. Some nice water on the far side there. Up against that bank and a bit of a boulder over there. It's a little bit hard to see because of the angle of the light here. Just how much how much depth there is in this pool. Okay. So the deeper section of the pool looks like it's just coming up here. That looks very nice. fairly bright now, it's cleared up a little bit, so I'm just going to hang back a little bit from this. The wind's dropped a tiny bit, which will let me fish at a little more distance. Put one right along the bank there. And sometimes in these smaller streams, if there's not a lot of cover, the fish really like to use the undercut banks. You can pick them up sometimes by drifting a nymph very tight in along the edge. And they'll shoot out from under the undercut and take it. So it looks like the deepest part of the pool is actually further up ahead here. But I'll just fish this tail out section. How are you going? Oh, that's up there. Hey? It's up there. It's like, I think that is the best river session I've ever had. Yeah, unreal. On the dry? Like, nah, I've got a few eats on the dry. Yeah. But I reckon I had, well I had three. Yep. I reckon easily over four pounds. Oh wow. And I had a rate, I have no, nothing to measure, nothing where to take photos. Yeah, right. I had a brown, he went, his Swash nose. your rod. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> his nose went past that guy. How big it's, do you reckon? He was 70. Did, did you get him? Yeah, yeah, got him in the net. Oh, did you get a photo? No photo. So, so I got down there. Right, and I'm yeah. sitting there, I start to cast, I see snowshoe caddis, snowshoe caddis, right? Yep. Right, right, right. The biggest hatch I've ever seen took place. Yeah. Like, it was, it was one it's of those ones where just, it was just cloud everywhere. And they're just, they're just eating without abandonment, they just... Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. <laughs> just wor epic. working my way up to this corner pool here. Wow. <clears throat> well, I, I've just been fishing up behind Dargonal, I've had um, four. Yeah. You know, some nice kind of 30 centimetre browns and stuff, yeah, but nothing yeah. massive. But there's not, there hasn't been a lot of good water, to be honest. No. In this, like, up from the, no, the, the crossing. Down, the river down there is completely different to this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's super deep. It's, like, yep. really... Way 
way better water. Yeah. Yeah. They want to be in the shade too. That's what I sort of noticed. Yeah. Had a couple of dry fly feeders in the rough, in the riffle, but so maybe um, is it worth um, is it worth us both walking down again and fishing that section? Yeah. Hey. Um, I don't know. I fish pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll just go. There's, there's, it's only in one section, so maybe right at the end of the day we'll just shoot down there and like rest yeah, right. Rest let, let it reset. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there's been very little depth basically up to this point. Yep. This is probably the deepest it's been. I'm just fishing a single, yep. like a single three, because it's been really small, pockety sort of water. Yep. Yeah. Little rainbow this time. There he is. Did you end up getting any on the dry? Nice. Oh, unreal. I haven't seen anything rise up in this stretch at all. There's a beautiful corner pool up here. This has got to hold more fish. It's a nice bit of depth. So I think we'll probably pull some more out of here. The fish that I've had so far have all just been out of really small little slots because there hasn't hasn't been I haven't had a good pool yet with good sort of depth or holding water yeah it's a good sort of uh, variety of insects up here isn't there there's one A little brownie. Oh. There's one. Oh, that's a nice fish. Whoa. Him out of that bank. Whoa. That's a lovely fish. A rainbow this time. Yeah, beautiful fish. There he is, beautiful rainbow. What a lovely fish. Alright. Off he goes. Jared's on a fishy. On the dry dropper. Little. Nice. What do you take? Do you take the nymph? Yeah. Yeah. Look at them, they don't want to eat dry anymore, which is annoying, but... Yeah. <coughs> Alright, do you want me to leave you this bend and go up to the next corner? That bend there, I fished through dry dropper, but it's quite deep. I didn't have the depth to get right to the bottom, so it's pretty worth a few casts up right on the back of it. Yeah, alright. Because it should, should have more fish in there. Yeah, okay, I'll go give that a slide. I've got a nice uh, sort of 35 it's rainbow saw that, yeah. back there. Yeah. yeah. So there's a nice deep corner pool here. <coughs> Jared's been over this with the dry dropper already, but there's some deeper water over there, so I'll go through it with the nymph and try getting a little bit deeper and see if there's anything down the bottom there that wouldn't come up. Oh, I think I just missed a small one. Yeah, there's a good fish. Oh, there was one in there, mate. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, shit, he's got me under the bank. Uh, he's out.
Oh, he got me under the bank. Oh, nice fish, maybe two pounds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not massive, but good fish. Yeah, he was right down deep in the slot, sort of. He was right down deep in the slot back in there. He was probably four feet down, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like constantly was putting it over that, in that line. Yeah. Yeah, I put quite a few drifts through there as well before I, before I got him to take. Yeah. Anyway, he broke me off. He, he got in under the bank over there. Yeah, right. I'm only on 6.5x, so... Yeah. I don't want to go too hard on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, time for a re-rig. That was a good fish. Um, he was sitting in that seam over there, just sort of on the edge of the back eddy. And uh, he ran back and forward a few times, tried a couple of times, and then eventually got me under that bank over there. I'm only fishing pretty light tip uh, at the moment, so I, I didn't want to try and horse him out too much. But uh, that's the way it goes. Anyway. Time to re-rig. All right, I might just try hitting a little bit more of the top of this slot now, just to see if there's anything sitting in this part. So far, I've only been getting one fish per pool, so there may have only been the one guy there, but we'll give this a shot. This is a nice deep stretch of water, so certainly possible that it could hold a second fish. It's a little bit of a deep slot here that perhaps Jared might not have totally got down through. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had a fish then. Bloody hell. Weird currents here. There's a nice little deep stretch through here. Get a through here, that looks alright. I've just borrowed Jared's dry fly rod and there's a nice little fish rising out here. Yeah, there he is. Oh, he took the nymph. Ah, <laughs> oh, I dropped him. <laughs> Couldn't keep contact on him. There's fish rising everywhere here now. Taking the nymph off. Oh, missed him. I just drifted that downstream to him on some slack. He took it. But I didn't get the hook set. Where is that? There, yeah, got him that time. Nice. Watch out for these holes here, it's bloody big wombat holes in the tussocks. It's a lovely little brown. Beautiful. Just give it a little bit of the dry shake. Is there a big brownie or something up there? Nah, Alright. You, you want it, hey? You have a shot at him, no, 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 no. You, no, no, no. Your fish, mate. Here. <sighs> I've cut the I've cut the dropper off because yeah. they're taking the dry here. Yeah, okay. Um I've got your I've got your nymph here, but That's um right. I just I had a couple of fish on the dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um because they're they're just rising all through here yeah. on the caddis. But mate, you go and have a shot. Do you want to shoot with the dry or, or the yeah. nymph? No, I'll hit him with the dry. Yeah. He's like nice. That sort of side. 
So Jared spotted a nice fish here in the river. Oh, there he just rose over there. Or well, might be a different fish, I don't know. Was that, I don't know if that was a big that fish. A big fish no. That was a little one, I think. Geez, he took it fast, didn't he? <laughs> You're gonna have, to, gonna have to be quick on the strike. So there's a nice deep corner bend here, a bit of deep water down the inside, some deepest part is sort of back in there where the back eddy is, and there's a flow in at the top. There's a fish rising just in this little eddy here. If you want to come up and fish it, I'll, I'll fish the head. He was just kind of in the, in the eddy there. There's one. Ooh, 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 this is a good fish. Oh, don't go under the bank, mate. Don't go under the bank. Oh, I haven't seen him come up yet. Oh. He's not massive, but he's good. Yeah. <clears throat> Just trying to keep him out of those banks. The brown, by the look of it. I think. He's behaving like a brown. Yeah. Finally! <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> Thanks, mate. So that last good fish that I landed, he was in this water here, which is basically the feeding lie for this pool back here. So you see there's some nice deep holding water back in this corner. Um, and that's where these fish will uh, sort of retreat. It's their cover area. And sometimes they'll, they'll still feed in there, but when there's a big hatch going on like this, I mean, look at all those caddis 
everywhere and there's there's millions of mayfly and damselflies and all kinds of stuff flying around so when there's a hatch on the fish will move up out of the holding water into the feeding lie which is the riffle at the top of the big pool far out there are so many bugs Oh, there's one. Oh, this is another good fish. Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he spat it. Oh. So we've come downstream now. Jared's just spotting, spotted a fish rising out beside that uh, closer rock out in the river there. It's a bit of a tight spot. There's no back cast directly where we were, but... You should be able to get one in there. Nice. That was about where he rose. That's nice. Here, there's a nice little pocket over here, but I've got to sort of wait out in the rocks a little bit to get to it. Let's see if there's anything in this in this pocket water. This one is in that pocket. Ooh. Rainbow. Nice. Beautiful. There we are. Lovely little rainbow. Off he goes. I'll be up a bit of this pocket now. Another nice little slot just up here. There, try to get into the slot. Okay, it's a bit of soft water along this edge. Just trying to drift one under those sticks, under those branches of that bush there. Don't know if I can do it from here. Maybe if I move up a little bit, might be able to get in further up. Although, before I do that, oh yeah, there's a fish. There he was. <laughs> he's right at my feet. Ooh, he's not a bad one. Ooh. Very tight quarters here. Not a lot of room to play this guy. Oh, oh where are you going, mate? Where are you going? It's a nice, decent brown, I think. Where is he? Is he down? Oh, maybe he's a rainbow. 
Here's Rambo. Whoa. Oh, get in there. You're not a bad fish. Nice Rambo. Alright. Flies out. There he is. There he goes. It's always the problem in tight quarters. You end up with a strike or pulling the fly out of something and it ends up flying into a bush behind you. Let's see if there's anything there. In that little pocket behind that boulder there. Yeah, there is. A little brownie. Nice. Lovely. Beautiful little fish. First cast in there and he smashed it. There we go. Might be a little brown. One more little pocket at the top there. Oh, I think I missed one then. Okay, I think I fished this reasonably well, so let's move up. It's a little bit more flow in this part of the pool. It's kind of the deeper middle section with some water still running. Let's have a look here, see if we pick up something. Yep. Just had to get on the right line, in that bubble line. Lovely. Beautiful fish. There he goes. Ah, oh, the wind. It's like blowing my entire leader away. Wow. Alright, I've moved up that pool just a little bit. Let's try a little bit of this deep water. I know Jared's already fished through this, but perhaps with a different fly, a different setup, I might be able to pick something up. It's a little bit tight in here with trees and so on. Just got to be a little bit careful. Replacing the cast. Jared's onto a nice fish here. Is he a good one? Oh, beautiful fish, mate. Yeah. That's very nice. Lovely. The purple again that's done the damage. Beautiful fish. Lovely. Beautiful markings on him. Isn't he? Yeah, gorgeous fish. Beautiful, mate. Was he on the top dropper? Ah, he's on the top dropper, yeah. Yeah, yes. whereabouts did he come from? Just there, basically. Yeah. So, sort of a little bit further back in the run. Yeah, yep. There's, uh, yeah. there's a few dry fly eaters up there as well, so. Yeah, nice. This is lovely looking water. Yeah. I'm going to drop one kind of right in under that uh, tree if I can. Yeah. Little sort of pocket over on the far bank over there. Probably just a little bit further than that. Lost my fly in the tree. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a take. Well, that was a top day, mate. We had quite a few, didn't we? Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, beautiful little river here. It's just, uh, 
you know, it gets a fair bit of pressure, but uh, it still fishes well, I think. You've got to, uh, they're maybe a tiny bit touchy, but um, they're certainly catchable. And for the size of the river this is, I reckon there's some surprisingly big fish in here, isn't there? Absolute crocodiles. Yeah. You had a you had an absolute crocodile this morning. Just hit my PB, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, didn't have any measuring, but he would have gone 70, 71-ish, I think, uh, dodging against my rods. So. That is an incredible fish for this river. Um, unfortunately, uh, didn't have the phone, didn't have the camera. Yep. <laughs> my, my, my phone now lives in a different river, so I don't have my phone with me. So, so there's, yeah, no, there's no proof, but we'll trust you, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yes. I, we definitely, um, you know, there was two, kind of two sections to this river as well, wasn't there? There was the top, the top meadow section, and there's this lower section, which is a little bit more natural fish land and, and gorgy. Yeah. And, uh, Deeper. And it certainly, yeah. yeah, you came down here first thing this morning, didn't you? And it yep. certainly seemed like this section fished better than the, uh, the meadow stream section. Yeah, 100%. It's yeah. Uh, just got that extra depth of cover and it's got shade for them. And there's, you know, the big fish are smart and that's where they want to be. So it's a good, good section down here. Yeah, absolutely right. Alright guys, well thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to leave us a comment, like, subscribe and we'll see you next time. Cheers.